It's hard to fully understand Charles Lawton's physical achievement in having played Quasimodo. His costume included a four-pound rubber hump and rubber makeup that pushed one side of his face up and the other side of his face down. It's really a credit that even under such heavy trappings, Lawton was able to convey the kind of pathos that makes his performance so compelling. Now let's get on to our next feature. David O. Selznick was a very busy man. He was wrapping up uh, the feature we're about to see made for each other, and he was looking for uh, Scarlett O'Hara for Gone with the Wind at the same time, when his brother, Hollywood agent Myron Selznick, became extremely ill. He was willing to do anything he could to help. Well, Myron came down with pneumonia, and Selznick was told that the only thing that could save him was a new serum which was being developed in New York. Well, at a cost of $5,000, Selznick chartered a TWA airplane and had the serum flown out to Los Angeles. A day later, Myron was out of danger. That afternoon, Selznick called members of his staff to his office. This is too good to waste on Myron, he said. Let's put it into our next film. Well, a few days later, the cast and crew of Made for Each Other we're back on the sound stages, and you'll see how Selznick works this incident into the film itself. Our stars here include Carol Lombard and James Stewart, but don't expect a fast-paced screwball comedy here. Carol was interested in showing the world that she could do serious drama, too. While the movie Going Public was surprised to find that Carol Lombard was a fine dramatic actress, Carol herself was surprised to find that James Stewart had a lot of talent as well. After making today's movie, Carol said that Stewart was one of the best actors she had ever worked with, a group which included, incidentally, Charles Lawton, whom we've just seen, John Barrymore, and Frederick March. She said he was more sincere than any of these people and just as talented. Let's watch Carol Lombard and James Stewart in Made for Each Other. Next on American Movie Classics, Scotland Yard investigates a baffling murder in the mysterious Sapphire. It's next on American Movie Classics. Made for each other, they're fine. Lombard's talent as a serious actress, that thing she was so concerned about. So following her work on Made for Each Other, she made three dramas in a row, but not for David O'Selznick. She sent Selznick a message about getting together to discuss her next project. Under the present contract, she owed him one other picture. Then she received one of Selznick's famous memos. It seems that he was concerned that since her recent marriage to Clark Gable, he and Lombard would not be able to work together anymore. Uh, Gable and Selznick had fought continually during the production of Gone with the Wind, and... Uh, Remember the scene in Hollywood Cavalcade which they, uh, in which they started throwing all those pies around? It seems that Buster Keaton accidentally smacked Alice Faye pretty hard with one of the pies. I can't think how that would ever happen. Well, she waited until everybody got cleaned up to get her revenge, and then she chased them all around the studio until she finally got them back, square in the puss. At the end of the film, you sort of assume that Michael and Molly are going to get married, but in real life, Max Sennett and Mabel Norman never really did tie the knot. Mabel died from tuberculosis in 1930 at the age of 35, while Senate lived to the ripe old age of 80. A union that did endure after Hollywood Cavalcade was the team of Don Amici and Alice Faye. They co-starred in six films for Fox. Both are still pretty active in show business. In fact, Don Amici won, as you know, the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his role in Ron Howard's Cocoon. I think I'll always remember Don Amici best as uh, his part in the Battling Bickersons. It was uh, Francis Langford, I think, that played Blanche, wasn't it? Boy, that was a great radio series. It's all terrific. We'll be right back, but let's take a look at this. Well, hello. Suave, dashing, charming. I'll bet your ugly face and that's what I'll do. On Wednesday, July 8th, American Movie Classics presents Cary Grant in two of his greatest films. That won't bother me. First, 
Cary Grant teams up with Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Sam Jaffe in one of the most exciting high adventure movies ever made. Oh, so I suppose you think you're a hero. That's right. George Stevens' production of Rudyard Kipling's Gunga Din. Then, never give a sucker an even break and always keep an eye on a pal. Cary Grant is a gambling man risking it all for love. I'm lucky, I can't lose. Lorraine Day co-stars in the carousing Mr. Lucky. You look one eight to me. We're granting you a night of rollicking movie entertainment with a Cary Grant double feature. Wednesday, July 8th on American Movie Classics. The new girl on the block is mad at her neighbors. Hey, Jeannie, look what flew over the wall. And the neighbors... Stop to stop, or else... ...are just mad about her. I'm mad. I'm mad, I'm crazy for the girl next door to me. June Haver, Dan Daly, and Dennis Day team up for a delightful tale of friends and lovers. No point in being too neighborly too soon. I love every minute of it. The Girl Next Door, premiering Tuesday, July 7th on American Movie Classics. They were young, in love, and full of dreams. It's all going to be different when my name goes up there on that door. Johnny, you really think so? Well, it's practically up there now. But dreams can be shattered. Johnny, they can't do this to you. No, I can't do this What if Jeff Doolittle think he is a puppet? And promise is broken. Lie to me! <laughs> Don't lie to me! But when life becomes one struggle after another... Everything I say is wrong and everything I do is wrong. Come quick, the baby. My baby's in the hospital dying of pneumonia. You don't give up without a fight. You're not asking a favor of him. You're demanding your rights. He'll listen. Now, you listen to me. When you asked me to take that cut down to the office, I took it, and I didn't beef about it, but I should have. We'll always be together, no matter what happens. Jimmy Stewart and Carol Lombard joined together in a spectacular dramatic performance. They were made for each other. Saturday on American Movie Classics. We're back, and I'd like to mention that last month, one of Hollywood's most popular tourist attractions, Man's Chinese Theater, celebrated its 60th anniversary. Now, this theater landmark on Hollywood Boulevard was built by show business entrepreneur Sid Grauman in 1927. Isn't that magnificent? Since its opening day, over 150 stars have left their handprints in the cement outside this wonderful theater. This ritual, according to legend anyway, happened quite by accident. Before work was completed on the theater, Grauman took Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and Norma Talmadge out to see it. And Talmadge accidentally, they say, stepped into some wet cement that was left uncovered. Of course, Grauman couldn't pass up that lucky opportunity, and he made Pickford and Fairbanks follow suit. I guess it doesn't really matter if the story is true or not. The fact remains that Hollywood, always ready to promote its product, still carries on the tradition that started back in 1927. At the current rate, there will be enough spaces to last through the year 2027 in time for the theater's 100th anniversary. Future stars will continue to plant their hand and footprints alongside of their predecessors at the film capital's most spectacular movie palace. We'll be right back, but first, here's something special from the film archives. to try this thing just once. Come on, honey. Don't show them a thing or three.
You're watching American Movie Classic. American Movie Classics is proud to present another bonus motion picture we're sure you'll enjoy. That's right, our broadcast day is not over yet, so sit back, relax, and enjoy this AMC Extra.